It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. In King Media, in association with Boxer, Richard Towers, uh, you know, big, big dude. I was just saying to Cash, he doesn't need any sparring to, you know, to fight someone like Joe Joyce because his coach is like bigger than Joe. Joe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We've prepared well. We've prepared well. And um, everything's in place. You know, nobody's looking past Big Joe, even though he's just been knocked out twice by Zhang. You know, that seems to be a topic everybody's touching on. And uh, a fight's a fight. You go from one fight to the next. Brendan used to say, you're only as good as your last fight. And we've not taken anything lightly. Cash has put the work in. You can see he's looking trim. And uh, we intend to make a, make a, make a note on um, Saturday, so. Cash has been you for a long time, you know, since he left the Ingle gym, you guys have kind of formed this bond. Uh, what makes you two tick and like work together than, you know, him not working with somebody else? Well, outside of boxing, first and foremost, me and Cash, we, we're friends, you know, and um, not only for the principality of uh, Prince, Prince, what's the word? Prince, Prince, principle of things, yes. Um, we've, we've got the same, you know, same outlook on everything. You know, training, Cash is, is a consummate professional. You know, if, if I told Cash to eat, eat this, he'll eat it. If I tell him not to eat this, he won't eat it, as long as it's halal. Um, and uh, and I, I can't, I've got no nothing negative to say about Cash. He's a brilliant human being. He's morally right in the right places. Uh, with regards to uh, sportsmen, like I said, he's, he's consummate about his, his thing. So uh, he's the ideal student to work with, let's say. And plus, I love the guy, so I want him to see. I want him to do well. I want to see him do well and come out of this sport with with some uh, some accolade of sort, you know. I remember watching Cash's early fights and he used to be a guy that used to box on the outside, very reluctant to let his hands go. Obviously, under your guidance, there's been a clearly a big change in that. He's had a, a lot of viral knockouts. Um, and, and But there's also been times where he's kind of come back into that mode where he's not in his hands go. And I remember a funny moment, actually, fought at Barnsley Metrodome and I was sat ringside. I remember he was winning the fight, but I remember you shouting to him, if you don't let your hands go, I'm going to throw the towel in. The Sakalaski fight, do you remember yeah, that's that? That's right, yeah, yeah. Well, um, Cash, as you say, it's um, it seems to be an habitual thing. You know, when, when Cash goes into into his mind, you know, it, it's usually as a result of uh, just just overthinking things and I've tried to just improve on every single uh, camp and uh, occasion that we've had including sparring you know when we're going away sparring try not to make a big thing of it and I'll look for little uh, little signs that cash lets off you know I see that it, a lot to do with his eyes you know he'll, he'll get busy with his eyes just before he starts going into the overthinking stage of things the physical side of it so I've just tried to improve on things the best I know how I'm no psychologist and I, I wouldn't say I'm the best, the best coach in the world, but what, what I would say is that um, I've, got a, I've got a passion for what we're doing. And as I say, I want Cash first and foremost as, as a man to do well. As a Muslim, he's, he's, he's right on all fronts. You know, you, you don't, Cash, you won't hear a swear word out of Cash. You know, he, he never insults anybody. He's always on the ball with the, the moral side of things. And that's where, I think that's where my passion comes from with Cash. I want to see him do well. Uh, with regards to you know the performances that he's had in the past that weren't the best, yeah, um, there's, they've been a, they've been a thing of of the past, you know, and the things that we've we've talked about, we've gone over intricately, and now Cash seems to have uh, turned a corner. So we'll see, you know, on the night of the fight, Brendan always used to say as well, you're only as good as your last fight, you know, and and um, you can talk all you want, you can do all you want in preparation. If you don't turn up on the night up here first then you're not going to do what's required. So hopefully, Cash is uh, on the ball. He seems to be on the ball. He's been on the ball for the past 10 weeks. So we'll, we'll see on Saturday. Definitely, yeah. I do enjoy watching your uh, different coaches' uh, styles of training. And the reason I remembered that story was because I remember looking at you and thinking, this guy's serious. He'll throw the towel in just because he's not letting his hands go. Um, just tell me what you're when you when you're saying that in the corner. What's what's your thinking as a as a coach? Because you, you seem like the kind of person when you say something, it's just got to be done. Yeah, I think uh, I try and stick by what I say, and Cash knows that uh, I'm I'm serious, especially when I'm referring to such a serious thing as you know a fight. Because a fight, the the common the common knowledge is you know you go into a fight, you're risking your life. 
Uh, you go into, we're, we're entertainers here. You know, not me anymore, but Cash is entertaining here. George Ice are entertainers. All these fighters are entertainers. And I think it's easily mistaken what a fight actually is, with fighters in particular. And I think it's important to just keep reminding them, you know, don't take this lightly. You've switched off. There's only so much you can do. Come on, come on. It's, it's, it's senseless motivation. Uh, I don't believe in motivation. I believe that if you prepare, you, you, you're more likely to perform. And Cash had done all the preparations. He prepared, or oh, I wouldn't have let him in ring in first place. You know, if, if I don't feel a fighter's 100% ready, I won't let him fight. It's as simple as that. Um, that's Brendan's teachings. But um, with regards to saying how we're going to throw the towel in, I, I can't rem really remember that. But uh, It was motivational talk. But it was more along the lines of motivation. And um, and I, I'll do anything to, to, to get Cash going. I'll do anything to see him succeed. You know, I'll do my part, but he's got to do his part. Sometimes we need a little kick up the bum, so to speak. That was a serious kick, kick up the bum. Um, the magnitude of this fight, if he wins this fight, like his life is potentially going to change. He ties himself into uh, potentially uh, future fights with uh, Queensbury as well. Um, do you think he'll be able to handle that pressure? Because the last time we saw him with this sort of occasion, obviously he folded against David Price. Do you think he'll learn from that experience and make sure if a moment like that comes, he can grind through it? Yeah, I think every one of our experiences, especially the, the negative experience, what we can refer to as the negative experiences, they teach us the most. You know, the ones that we've had smooth sailing, everything's gone right and you, you walk out victorious, I think they teach us the least. But you can take lessons from each, each thing and cash... Um, in the past, he's, he's not focused on anything but the occasion at the time. And I've tried to slow things down and explain to him, Cash, this is what it's going to be. This is what we're going to do. If you do your part of the plan, I'll, I'll do my part of the plan. And we both contribute. We're going to come with a result. Don't worry about losing. Don't worry about drawing. Don't worry about getting knocked out. All those things are possible. That's a fight. But if we focus on the negatives more than the positives, it's good to have a balance on everything. So I think I've got Cash to a, a good mental place now where he's not necessarily worried about his concern, which he should be. He's concerned about getting touch. So, so his opponent should be. But heavyweight boxing, you know, anything can change at any time, any time in particular. I've sparred with guys who, you know, I, I don't want to mention names, but um, I, I often look past you know, because I'd, I'd run rings around them in sparring, I'd run ring, rings around them, you know, skill-wise and stuff like that. And I've sparred with them, I've took my eye off the ball for a second, boom, they've caught me with a jab. And the jabs felt like a right hand by Deontay Wilder, you know. Um, so you, there's lessons on every every turn, every nook and cranny you've got lessons to be learned from. And I've just tried to point those things out to Cash to make him aware of the necessary things rather than... Uh, being aware of the wrong things. I think that's something that I learned, especially moving to Adam from Brendan's. When I moved down there, I was stuck between, you know, moving around and, you know, doing all the stuff that Brendan showed me um, it, it, for, for all the intention of not getting hit. Then when I went down to Adam, Adam asked me, he said, throw, throw a stereotypical jab, Richard. And I threw a jab and I thought I would correct, I would bang on the button. I thought, yeah, I heard the slap on the pad. And Adam got tears in his eyes. We, we, we're really close, me and Adam. And he said, throw another jab, Richard. And there were people there. I think I was born with Dillian at the time, Dillian White. And he said, uh, throw another jab, Richard. And I threw what I perceived as a jab. Boom. Caught it again. And uh, Adam said, have you never been shown how to throw a jab, Richard? And at that point, I realised, because we had a conversation about it, I'd not learnt the basics, but that wasn't the way Brendan taught you know, in, in, in Brendan's magical essence, he teach you the best way that any any coach could teach you. But each coach has its as his um, his qualities, and I think uh, one of the things that I'm pretty good at doing with Cash in particular, and with the kids, it's proven with the kids as well, is I'm good at um, explaining the finer details of things so that they understand. You know, with as few words as possible. Me and Adam, he'll know what I'm on about when he is that. But um, now I like to think that we've got a good measure on what he needs to do, what he doesn't need to do. We don't need to worry about this. Don't worry about that. If we're practicing something new, only do it when, when it feels right to do because he can see what I can't see being in the ring. He can see what his opponent's anticipating to do. I can't. I can tell him things from my perspective, but 
I still can't see things from his perspective. So I think it's important for a fighter to have confidence in what he does as well as what your, the coach is trying to teach him. That's an incredible breakdown. I think most people who may not know, you've got some amazing life experiences from the people that you've trained with uh, and sparring. You've sparred some of the best heavyweights of this generation. So at some point, I want to come down and sit down with you in the gym. And well, I think we'll have a good chat about just your life and uh, your experiences in boxing. Uh, just before I let you go, Richard, I just want to get your opinion on the AJ and Garnu fight. Um, uh, in short, is AJ now the best heavyweight in the world? Because that's what people are saying now. Well, Eddie Hearn mainly. What I don't want to do is I don't want to take anything away from Joshua. You know, he deserves the utmost respect. He's, uh, he's, a, um, a, he's a household name. You know, he's a consummate professional. You just look at his physique, you can tell he takes it seriously. But to, to, to rate a, a, a world champion or a two-time world champion off, you know, fighting a, a guy what's had one serious, what's had one serious, um, competitive world-class fight in Tyson Fury to to credit or discredit a fighter uh, what's reached that level, the level that AJ has reached. I think it's a discredit to the sport. I think it's a discredit to him. And just as Joshua said, which I, I, I had respect for, he said, he said, I'm not taking this winners, you know, I'm the most, I'm the best, I'm the most accomplished champion. He goes, I've boxed a guy what's had one professional boxing fight. He goes and he's walked onto something like an inexperienced f fighter would would do, and um, you can't take anything away from Ingarnu. When I watched the shot, I could see what Joshua was trying to do. I sparred with Joshua as well a lot. I could see what he was trying to do, and he was trying to get his attention to to his body. So he touched his body a few times. He he uh, touched his gloves with a, with a jab, you know, to try and close his slow his mind down a little bit, and picture perfect he landed the the best right hand in the business you know and, and 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 it had the desired effect you know which it's going to do this is heavyweight boxing and one of the things that i took from that fight is the amount of people that are actually stupid enough to believe that somebody of Ngannou's caliber in boxing referring to boxing because you know i would like to meet on, on a dark alley he can kick, he can wrestle, he can punch, you know, elbow, whatever they use in MMA. But it's not MMA, it's boxing. And the reason why I mentioned stupid people is because you've got literally experienced boxing uh, experts, you know, boxing professionals saying, you know, that this guy's got a chance against somebody like AJ, who's a, is, a, is, is the perfect, perfectly manufactured boxer in terms of, you know, the, the stereotypical ground roots of boxing, you know, jab, right, uh, cross, hooks, upcuts, you know, he's the perfect specimen for what you'd picture a boxer to be. To think that a guy can come from the cage into the ring, box Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury, you've got to give this guy credit. This guy can run rings around anybody. And I do believe that he'll run rings around Joshua, no disrespect to anybody, but I know that people are now probably saying, oh, well, Tyson Fury didn't get rid of Ngannou. Tyson Fury, he's got every trick in the bag and he's got to where he's got to and I've got maximum respect for him because nobody, including me, anticipated what height he was actually going to reach. And the fact that he's got to where he's got to, you've got to do nothing but respect him. But it, it shocks me, it surprises me how, you know, I use the term stupid people look at Tyson Fury and say, ah, he's not as capable now. You know, he'll still run rings around a lot of heavyweights. And he's a big man what's doing these small man things. And, you know, you've never seen nothing like it. But at the same time, Joshua, you know, he's, he's gone in against the guy what, what's um, inexperienced in uh, boxing pugilism sense. And he's got knocked out. But what did you really expect? You know, not trying to be wise off the event, but it's, it's, this, is a, this is the top of the scale. And you're getting in there, you're gonna get you're gonna get hurt. And I hope, this is my final point, I hope that people realise this sport is to be taken deadly seriously. You know, I've had I've had people stand in front of me outside of the boxing ring and they're stood with their feet square and they've got their hands down and they've got their chin in air and the they're, they're, they're speaking to me um with profan profanity or whatever you want to call it. And I've just looked at the feet, looked at how they stood, looked at the chin in air. And I've played the bigger man and I've gone, you know what, see you later. Yeah, yeah, walk away and called me a, a derogative term. 
and I've just walked away in the, in the knowledge that this guy's got no idea. Same as, you know, in Ghana at that level, had no idea. And I think uh, people's stupidity uh, says a lot for the way society is going now. And we aren't going too deep into that. I think, um, what, what else could you expect? Well, what else could you have expected? And I think if, if, um, if Nganu goes in with Dillian, if Nganu goes in with um, Deontay, if Nganu goes in with uh, Dubois, if Nganu goes in with Cash, if Nganu goes in with Joe Joyce, it's a dangerous place to be because you can't kick, you can't elbow, you can't grab. It's a dangerous place to be. And these guys are practicing every day to use the two weapons. The, the MMA guys, you know, it's common knowledge, not trying to be smart, but they're practicing using the, 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 the legs, the wrestling, the, the elbows, the punching. The, it's a lot, it's a much, much different sport. So I think now, hopefully, um, we'll, we'll see people start to take things a little bit more serious. You're always going to get stupid people. Ah, uh, Tyson Fury's done because he didn't knock Ngarno out like Joshua did. You'll see, you will see, you will see. Richard, I generally appreciate that deep, uh, thorough insight into your mind and how you look at boxing. Um, well, like I said, we'll have a sit down at some point and talk about your experiences in boxing. Appreciate uh, your words and uh, all the best Saturday night. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.